This is the voice of the Report of the Week, signing on. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone listening. This is VORW International, the voice of the Report of the Week, signing on for another program. VORW International is a weekly light entertainment program which features a broad variety of miscellaneous talk and discussion on many, many different subject matters. It's really a program where I just share my thoughts on uh, whatever is going, going on, going through my mind, whatever that may be. And I also, of course, take listener-submitted topic suggestions, so the, the range of discussion you will hear in this show is truly unlimited. VORW International can be heard each and every week on a wide variety of platforms, including SoundCloud, TuneIn, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, Google Play, YouTube, and on the International Shortwave on the frequency of 7780 kHz at 4 p.m. every Thursday to Eastern North America and Europe and at 8 p.m. Eastern every Thursday on 5850 kHz to North America. Do stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy this program. Uh, Today's show is going to feature some interesting discussion. Uh, Recently, we reached the 8-year anniversary of the YouTube channel, the Report of the Week. I'm going to kind of take a look at that. And uh, then we also have some very interesting listener submitted topics. I think we have four or five that I want to get to, and uh, just some good things ahead in uh, this hour or so. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. On one very early note, of course, if you would like to uh, just say hello, let me know you're listening, uh, submit a reception report, and uh, if you have a topic suggestion, anything you would like to hear about, feel free to send me an email. The contact address for the program is vorwinfo at gmail.com. V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. That's vorwinfo at gmail.com. Likewise, of course, we do have our two advertisers. We will get to them in a minute. One thing that I'm going to stress, and I'm going to do so in a very quick manner, keep in mind that while I made the budget cuts, it was for a very obvious reason, that being that funding just wasn't coming in. And I will make an assertion. Uh, You know, I will go as far as to say that with the expansion of this program onto uh, various online platforms... Digital listenership is probably at an all-time high right now. It is probably the highest it's ever been. This broadcast is entirely listener-funded. Of course, the radio airtime costs quite a pretty penny. Production costs also cost money and add up each and every week. And then the cost, of course, to host this program now on this variety of podcasting sites. All these expenses add up, and, of course, with this being a continuous program, the need for support is continuous. You might say, well, that's fine, but like you said, listenership is at its highest, so someone's going to foot the bill, right? Well, wishful thinking. Last week, I will be very blunt, and uh, again, I'll keep it quick. Last week, out of all the tens of thousands of listens and listeners that tuned in, we received two donations. One of which was for 20 bucks, the other was for five dollars, and that was it. When the costs to run this program each month, despite any cutbacks, still draw close to a thousand dollars, twenty-five dollars can only be stretched so far. I ask of you, if you can, please consider a donation via PayPal to vorwinfo at gmail.com. That's vorwinfo 
info at gmail.com via PayPal. Just bear in mind what I just said. A lot of people think that someone else is going to be able to take care of it, that they'll be able to foot the bill. And unfortunately, that's not the case. If everyone listening chipped in a little bit, wouldn't need to have this conversation again week after week. Please consider it and please do your part. Thank you sincerely. And with that being said, how about we just step outside into the fresh air and continue our discussion there. So once again, we are uh, outside, at least recording this portion of the program. Outside I am, though there is one significantly different variable uh, than compared to previous shows we have recorded outside, and that is simply the time of day which this is being recorded at. Uh, Right now it's 12.50 p.m., so it is uh, midday. You know, just just getting close to 1 o'clock p.m., and with that granted, of course, you have that change of uh, scenery, of course, a lot more people out, about, uh, lots more traffic, planes flying about, and, uh, of course, when you consider the weather as well. You have the birds chirping and all of that stuff, so there may be a little more discernible background noise. I don't think that'll be a problem, though. You know, last last show I was a little concerned about the uh, rain that was in the background. And if anything, people, uh, people said they enjoyed it. They said it was actually... Uh, Enjoyable. As a matter of fact, a few people even said, uh, with the rain in the background, uh, do more of it. You know, have more little ambient noise in the background. And while perhaps this may not necessarily be ambient noise, it's not white noise, that's for sure, hopefully it proves to be enjoyable and just a little bit of a, whatever, an accompaniment to, uh, you know, whatever we have before us today. So, as this is being recorded and going out, it is Thursday, the 21st of February, 2019. And do you know what yesterday was? Yes, it was Wednesday, right? It was Wednesday, the 20th of February, uh, 2019. Every February marks an anniversary. And with no exception, of course... Wednesday, the 20th of February, 2019, marked the eight-year anniversary of my YouTube channel. My God, eight years it's been. There wasn't any sort of pomp or uh, celebration or uh, any of that that went behind it. It's just another day. It was just a, uh, it's just another day. Kind of like, you know, it it all depends on how you view birthdays, right? Like some people, they uh, they see their birthday as a uh, some huge celebratory occasion. Now some people will see it kind of almost with dismay, you know, that they're turning another year older. And then other people sometimes get asked the uh, age-old question, so how do you feel today? You know, do you feel any different now that you're a year older? I always laugh a little bit and think to myself, am I supposed to? I I feel no different than I did the day before. And uh, I highly doubt I will feel any different today than I will the day after. Uh, You know, it's just another day. Another day, you change the digit and life moves on. But, yes, Wednesday the 20th of February. Every uh, February 20th. Another year gone by. My goodness, how crazy time time flies. I started all of this eight years ago now. Wow. Back in 2011. Very early 2011. And uh, this is something that I talk about each and every year. Because, of course, this always comes around during this time of year. I, it just amazes me that it's been uh, it's been going so long. And also with the fact that, you know, not only has it has it continued on for eight years, I mean, I plan to keep it going for however long it does, but how things have so drastically changed over these eight years 
though there still is that one constant and that's this YouTube channel you know it's it's been here the entire time and I've been managing it maintaining it and keeping it going the entire time as well my YouTube channel for those of you I'm certain a very very large number of you know what it is uh, but of course for those of you listening perhaps on the radio or maybe you're just finding this podcast out uh, my YouTube channel it goes by the name the report of the week uh, that's just one long word you know the report of the week with no spaces though and it's a uh, well, nowadays it's just a review based YouTube channel uh, where I'll just share my thoughts on one thing or the next and try to make it uh, mildly entertaining and uh, it's I don't know it's just it's fascinating and surreal number one the passage of time now that is something that I've lectured about uh, before to great extent something I could probably lecture on show after show though I would feel like a bit of a broken record and I think you would notice that as well it's something that always continues to mesmerize though at the same time I mean it's just it is what it is time moves forward but I started this channel out, you know, eight years ago. Like I've always said, I started it out for fun. I started it out really as a means of fulfilling a curiosity. Granted, because eight years ago, I was much younger than I am now, or everyone was. And I had this curiosity, and this even goes back to 2010 about energy drinks you know you see the energy drinks you see them marketed you see monster uh, you see red bull you see five hour energy and all of these types of energy drinks some of them being advertised digitally uh, through various media sponsorships through sporting events and I remember at the time I was never a big coffee drinker you know I always found it too bitter Things have changed, of course. Now I, I can't go a day without my coffee. I just, I, I down it every single morning. You know, gotta go to Starbucks, gotta get another fix. But at the time, I wasn't a big fan of coffee, uh, nor was I a, a really big caffeine consumer. You know, I would sometimes have the occasional caffeine pill here and there and some tea, but I wasn't really a big caffeine consumer. I always was a night owl, though. Well, maybe we'll get to that later, but... Anyway. Uh, you know, curiosity... That didn't kill the cat. If anything else, curiosity is the reason why everything is where it is right now. Uh, because I had this curiosity, you know? I, I saw all of these energy drinks. I'd never had one. I knew that they were supposed to give you a, a boost. But, I mean, what did they taste like? And what really did they do? I had no idea. So I was genuinely curious. Yeah, I wanted to know, well, what did they taste like? What did they really do? Did they do anything? Did they not? Was there any sort of enhancement in one's performance? Are they delicious? Are they terrible? Uh, you know? I had all of these questions, all of these unanswered questions going on in my mind. And I had the resources, you know, I, kind of like last year, I, I did a lecture on this a year ago. And like I said, I don't want to feel like a broken record, so I'll just give you the Cliff Notes <laughs> version of it all. But I had this camera, this flip camcorder, and uh, I, I just had, you know, I had it sitting there. It was the resource at my disposal, but before then I wasn't doing anything. I was just kind of letting it sit, maybe filming a home movie here and there, but you know, it wasn't going out to any sort of vigorous use. And everything just added up. I had this curiosity about what these drinks tasted like. That was for months. I mean, I was, uh, I was thinking about it in late 2010, and I was even trying a few then, but I wasn't really documenting the effects or anything. I was just thinking, you know, I wonder what this tastes like. And of course, I knew what YouTube was, and I guess everything just came together in early 2011, and I decided to start a YouTube channel. And 
And at first, I remember I wasn't really sure what to call it. As a matter of fact, you know, the report of the week, uh, it wasn't even going to be the name that I was going to go with at first. I think I was originally going to call this channel the Weekly Report, or something to that extent anyway. But I remember when I was trying to get the username that was taken, then I was trying to think, well, what's the next best one to go with? And I, well, that was the Report of the Week. So I took that. Because the original intention granted of the, this YouTube channel was not to create any sort of content on a daily basis, but rather it was supposed to be a weekly basis. It was supposed to be uh, uploads every Sunday for the most part, where I would just try out a uh, energy drink on camera, you know, kind of give my thoughts, my reflection, and it would just be a review. And uh, it was a means of really satisfying this personal curiosity. And uh, just, you know, getting it out there on YouTube as well. I really kind of looked at it as a study at first, more than anything else. But it was all done for fun. It wasn't done for any sort of payoff or anything else. It wasn't done to try to get big, you know, try to get rich quick or uh, find that fame and fortune and be a rock star or anything like that. It was, I just, I wanted to try out these drinks and uh, post the findings. And that's how it started out. I remember when I did film the first review that I ever made, uh, the first time, there was this uh, technical issue, I had the camera the wrong way. So the first video that was ever posted on the YouTube channel on February 20th was uh, the second take, because the first one was just, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't filmed the right way. And back then I just didn't have the sophisticated editing equipment to be able to just kind of rotate and straighten it out, and so I just had to redo it. I remember, uh, I really didn't know how I felt after the first video, but I remember posting it to YouTube, and I remember just thinking to myself how cool it is to be able to share this with the world, even if only a few people uh, find it and watch it and discover it. I remember the next week I did my second video, where I tried, uh, of course, the famous monster energy drink. I think it was after that video was filmed, after I was done filming it and I was kind of uploading it a little bit. I remember just kind of pacing around and thinking to myself, wow, this is, this is so cool. And it's actually, it's kind of fun to be able to sit here, uh, turn on the camera, and kind of just do my own little show. You know, that's what it was just my own little show, even if it was for an audience of zero, I was having fun with it, uh, you know, just talk for five, however many minutes, usually it was around eight, nine minutes, sometimes ten, talk about this drink, maybe make a few little comments, a few jokes here and there, and just have, you know, a fun little time uh, doing this on YouTube, and from there I just decided to continue, you know, continue it, keep it going. Initially, of course, when I hadn't ever filmed anything before, I wasn't sure how long this was actually going to last. I thought I was just going to wrap it up and that'd be it. But I liked doing it, so I said, all right, well, I'm going to make this my pastime. I'm just, I'm just going to make this, you know, my little, uh, my little hobby. And do a video each week, uh, report the findings, post it to YouTube, have some fun with it. And uh, whoever watches it, watches it. And of course, uh, things changed over time. Oh man, I could give you such a long-winded <laughs> year-by-year history. I've already done that, though. There's no need to. But to give you the abridged version, you know, things uh, things really did change over the years. Uh, you know, through the year of 2011, I mostly just kind of had the channel focused as uh, a platform to review these energy drinks. And it really just had a small audience of, uh, oh, just a few people who I knew personally, uh, a few people from school back when I was there, and, uh, you know, one or two people that perhaps found it on the search engines. And then in 2012, I decided to expand the uh, YouTube channel a bit, uh, add the food reviews, which now are the most, it's probably the most well-known content on the channel. Add the food reviews to uh, the repertoire. Start reviewing some food along with the energy drinks. 
Uh, you know, the audience was still pretty small, it was very tight-knit. Then in 2013, that was the year when uh, everything really did change. Uh, when I remember in 2013, one of my videos, you know, I was reviewing food at the time. I was reviewing a, uh, a pizza from Domino's, back when they uh, kind of redid their whole menu, and they uh, brought these, uh, they got rid of the deep dish pizza, and they replaced it with pan pizza. And, of course, I was just trying that out. I was doing one of my uh, food videos. And someone just posted it to uh, Reddit. And the video went viral. And it was incredible. I mean, it was actually surreal. This was in January of 2013. It was surreal, though, because... You know, nothing like that had ever happened to me before. Uh, nothing anything anything even close to it so it was I, it was incomprehensible or I remember you know because at the time my videos were only getting maybe uh, 50 views uh, 100 views you know after having been at it for really two years the channel had maybe 200 subscribers and I don't know maybe two dozen active uh, viewers so, you know, it was very small. Like I said, it was tight-knit. I kind of... Even if it wasn't personally, I kind of knew everyone that watched the video. Because, you know, you had your regulars. You had your regular viewers. And uh, there wasn't many comments or anything. So you could easily keep track of, you know... I'm glad to hear from so-and-so again. You know. That's just the way that it was. And none of my views, or, or videos, I guess, ever really got any views... And I remember this one morning I woke up and I checked my email because, again, it was, it was just very quiet. I would get, like, a, an email to me if anyone commented on a video or uh, if anyone subscribed to the YouTube channel. And again, because it was so quiet, I never really got a lot of emails at the time. Uh, maybe one or two notifications a day, uh, three at most. So imagine my reaction when I woke up this one morning, and I look, and there were maybe four or five hundred email notifications in my inbox, uh, with probably more coming in by the minute. I imagine my surprise. And I, I remember I, I looked at it and I thought to myself, what on earth is happening here? I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I thought to myself, what's going on? You know, did, uh, is someone spamming me? Uh, did it get hacked? Uh, what's happening? Kind of through a little bit of discovery, I, uh, I realized someone had posted one of these videos on Reddit, and it went viral. Now, retrospectively, you know the old saying, hindsight is twenty twenty, Because sometimes you can see a situation in reflection, you know, looking back years, and you can see things clearly, more clearly, than you ever were at that time. And you kind of are able to have these little revelations. And, uh, at the time, I didn't know why everyone was kind of posting the uh, YouTube content. I, I wasn't really sure why it was getting so much traction. Now, in retrospect, and even in 2013, I figured this out pretty quick. And it made me very depressed for a long time when I did realize it. At this point, I don't care anymore. You know, if someone's going to watch, let them watch. Uh, for whatever reasons, I don't care. I upload the videos, and uh, whoever sees it is whoever sees it. You know, that's that's my policy anyway toward uh, YouTube and everything uh, related to it. But at first, I wasn't sure why. And I was actually dull enough to believe, at first, that people were uh, posting the content because they actually enjoyed it. On rare occasions, <laughs> that may be the case, but in general, that's not how the internet works. Uh, people aren't very keen to share something just because they thought it was cool. And when they do, it doesn't necessarily get a lot of traction. The posts on the internet that get the most traction are either controversial, 
extremely newsworthy or they're funny. Always exceptions, but that's largely it. And eventually it clicked, and I realized, you know, based on all the comments and everything, people weren't watching these uh, this one video and posting it and sharing it because they just thought it was a good uh, pizza review. They were laughing at me uh, because there I was, this young adult, uh, you know, in a full three-piece suit, very seriously reviewing this pizza. And a lot of people found that rather humorous. And as a result, they were posting it, and they were kind of just, you know, look at this stupid uh, this stupid kid, you know, taking this so seriously. And, uh, you know, like I said, at first I didn't, I didn't think that's why people were doing it. <laughs> but even then it kind of clicked. And I realized, well, you know, all these hundreds of thousands because again it used to just be a couple dozen now all of a sudden hundreds of thousands of people were flooding and, and flocking into the YouTube channel and it hit me I realized you know all these people uh, that are coming to the channel they don't really uh, like me or the content they're not laughing with me they're laughing at me they're they're mocking me they're kind of uh, they're just they're messing me around and I didn't really handle that revelation well, so I took a break. That was probably the longest break I ever took from the YouTube channel, but, you know, it, it, it was just overwhelming. It was just too much. And I took a break, you know, to reflect on it, to just think it over, and to kind of just stop it. You know, it was one of those things needed to just reevaluate things. So I took a break from the YouTube kind of after that video went viral because it was just too much, too much to process, too much to handle, too much granted to simply deal with. But I came back in March of 2013, and so it continued, and uh, just rebuilt it, continued it onward. Then late 2013, uh, 4chan, <laughs> they discovered the YouTube channel, and boy did they put me through the ringer. Uh, that was probably some of the worst uh, it had been through. They, uh, I'll, t I'll tell you this, the folks at 4chan, they, they pulled no punches. Uh, they just, you know, anything you could think of sent my way. Uh, death threats, you name it. And, uh, again, that, you know, I wasn't very used to feedback. I was taking that stuff literally. At the time, I was. And uh, it was a very rough patch, but, you know, starting in 2014, another year gone by, things eventually settled down. Then I started out VORW, uh, which originally was just a YouTube-based audio show. I guess we'd call it a podcast now. And uh, I largely focused on that for the bulk of 2014, still reviews here and there. 2015 uh, was pretty much a continuation of 2014 with the channel, though I first got this show on shortwave, got it on radio station WBCQ, and uh, then starting in 2015, I decided to try to change this channel a little bit to the extent where it is going to be more like an occupation instead of a hobby. I tried to monetize the content, tried to start reviewing more popular food items, and uh, eventually into 2016... Uh, camera upgrades, etc. Put through the ringer once again with 4chan. And uh, then in 2017, you know, it was starting to get more views. Uh, a lot of people were kind of seeing the channel as a meme. But I didn't really care, you know. I figured, well, let them, you know, let them spread the word. Go for it. Uh, share it however you'd like. And uh, then 2018, a really big year for the channel. Uh, lots of uh, promotion and growth. And that's when it surpassed 1 million subscribers. And uh, now we go into 2019, where uh, I'm trying to just keep the main YouTube channel food-related. Of course, with exceptions, but that's really what people want to see. And then I made a second YouTube channel for the podcast and for the radio show. We still have the radio show going out on shortwave. We've got it going out on a couple frequencies, 7780 kilohertz and 5850 kilohertz. This audio is going out via. And then we have the music show, 
still going out on, uh, you know, many frequencies. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the, the times, the broadcast, all that stuff can change just because of funding. You know, it's so expensive to run all this stuff, but it's a passion. Sometimes, uh, it's about, I guess, a few weeks ago, where the show was really going through the financial uh, difficulties. And, you know, I had to pull one of the broadcasts, actually two of them, uh, because I could not sustain it financially. And I remember someone said, you know, but I don't think you should pull it, because if it's if you're doing what you like doing, and you're not reaching anyone, you should still keep doing it. And I thought to myself, yes, that is a very excellent premise, but when finances are involved, it's a different story. Uh, you know, it's makes no sense to keep doing something and spend two grand a month if it's not reaching anyone when I could really just do the same thing and make those cuts and be a lot better off so that's what happened and, and simply that's that but nonetheless uh, you know things continue they're ever changing, they're ever evolving but you know we still have this platform, this wonderful platform spanning the platforms really spanning the years the platforms we've got a presence on of course youtube twitter instagram reddit of course now we have the podcast going out on itunes spotify tune in soundcloud uh, stitcher pocket casts google play even on the international shortwave on a good number of frequencies just in, in reflection as I sit here this afternoon, just thinking about all that's happened over the last eight years. It's been an incredible ride, you know? And like any ride, it's had its ups and downs. It's had its twists and turns. The expected, the unexpected. Uh, the grim and the beautiful. Truly, though, what ride doesn't? How incredible it is, though. It's just... You know, as I started up the microphone today and began recording, and just kind of, in my mind, chronologically, going through year after year, I, I kind of find myself right now filled almost with these little goosebumps, you know? And... Trust me, it's not chilly outside, it's 80 degrees, and here I am sitting out in a three-piece suit, but, uh, you know, it's it's that type when it's, you know, I'm just reflecting, and sometimes it just still feels so, so surreal, because I really don't look at this retrospectively too often, I just kind of, you know, I, not that I'm all about the here and now, but it's just, you know, I... I don't really look look back upon my old content too much, but just thinking about it, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it's just surreal. I guess that's the best way. How, how it's just in, so incredibly changed, it's like it's, I almost can't even believe it's, it's happened. How fascinating it is. I guess the best piece of advice I could ever give you if you yourself are a content creator, is if you start something up, and you're doing what you enjoy doing, and, you know, like I said earlier, just a few minutes ago, of course we gotta be practical about it, and, you know, finances are finances. Uh, you know, if you're starting up a YouTube channel, and you're going paycheck to paycheck, and you're wondering, well, uh, what should I use my last paycheck for, rent? Or should I use it to buy a better camera and hope that I can make it big on YouTube and get that uh, that Sprite sponsorship and start making thousands of dollars? Uh, use it for rent. Always. Always make sure that you yourself are taken care of and there's significant others in your life and you got family, and you got kids, or you got pets. You know, make sure that you're taken care of all of them are taken care of. Always put you and that 
things, everything that means of significance to you, put that first. You gotta put you first, then your pursuits. But anyway, like I was saying, if you're doing something that you enjoy doing, and you have all that taken care of, I mean, keep it up. Keep it going. You got that drive, you've got that passion, that urge to create, and it's fun, it's enjoyable, keep it going. I can't give you a guarantee, it's merely my story, but I just want to say you never know. That time, that effort, that persistence and that diligence may one day pay off, and what you originally started as a hobby may end up being your livelihood one day. If you found what you enjoy doing, don't give it up. Make sure you keep it going. I had my ups and downs, I had my twists and turns, I had those lowest of the low points, and those highest highs. Keep it going. Don't give up. Because as I've said before, and I'll say it once again, you just do not know what the future holds. And the best way to look at it Especially, again, like I emphasize, if it's what you enjoy doing. Even if there ever are, if there, there never are any sort of benefits to reap, if it's what you enjoy doing, that in and of itself is a benefit. Because you're having a fun time doing it. Never forget that, too. If making content, or whatever it is, I say this in such a generalized term, Make sure you really savor it and have fun and have a good time too. Make some good memories out of creating the content. That's the most important thing because that kind of just drives that passion. It feeds upon itself. It gives you that motivation to keep it going further. And it might keep you going through any sort of rough patches. You know, who's to say? But that's just my, my advice to you. As I always say, though, the most important thing is just not to hurt other people. I never believe in that. I never believe in making something or doing something at the detriment, at the expense of someone else. That's always wrong, in my opinion. I I never support that type of of content, even if people will lap it up, you know, because it is, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people love mockery. But that's just one thing, I I could never advocate it with a clean conscience. Don't hurt other people, be that physically or mentally. This is VORW International, the voice of the Report of the Week. Always interested in your feedback, your thoughts, views, opinions, questions, topic suggestions. Uh, What are your thoughts on the show so far? I'd love to hear from you. Always great to just know that someone somewhere is out there listening. Send me an email, V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. Last week, you know, I I decided to make a change. I said, you know, I'm not going to really ask for correspondence as much as I I usually do. And, you know, as a result of that, uh, the correspondence received was the lowest probably it's been in close to two years. And because I'm so used to, you know, running this show in such a rigid, linear manner, so to speak, at first I started freaking out, and because I wasn't seeing a lot of response, I was thinking to myself, what the hell did I do wrong this time, you know? I was was thinking to myself, what did I do? What what did I do wrong? Uh, But then I just re-examined it, You know, of course, through some of the podcast apps and all that, you can kind of get a better track on online statistics, and not fully. And I realized, no, people are still listening. Uh, It's just because I didn't emphasize such a call to write in, you know? Yeah, there wasn't as much. Wasn't any sort of massive screw-up on my end, as far as I'm concerned, but it's always great to hear from our listeners nonetheless, so if you have anything to say, that's the address to say it. V O R W. I-N-F-O at gmail.com And if you have a topic you'd like to suggest for future broadcasts, uh, if there's something you'd like to hear me address, talk about, uh, refer to, whatever, 
just send me an email, v-o-r-w-i-n-f-o at gmail.com. I can't guarantee that I will talk about it, but, hey, there is no harm in trying, like I say every week. Unless it's by some astronomical coincidence, chances are I'll never end up talking about what you suggest, so just, you know, throw your hat in the ring and get it out there. Also, if you are tuned in on shortwave, listening to our uh, radio syndication, please let me know how reception is. If you want a QSL card, I'll get you one, but reception reports in general are just appreciated. So again, feedback, V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. With that, we have a few listeners that I do want to get to. The first one I will describe as a more editorialized comment in regards to what we talked about last week from Nicholas. He writes, quote, I was listening to your Valentine's Day podcast, and here is something to consider. While, yes, it is true that Valentine's Day is used as an advertising vehicle for chocolate companies... It does have a really long stretch in history. Valentine's Day reaches back to the pre-Christian Roman holiday of Lupercalia, which, during the second week of February, a collegia of priests would announce matchmaking pairs for young men and women. It was carried into the Christian world, where some pope eventually said it was too pagan and renamed it the Feast of St. Valentine where it celebrates its current form. The Western world has been celebrating Valentine's Day in different forms for like about 3,000 years. It would not have been around for 3,000 years if it wasn't effective, just something to consider when you say it is a corporate holiday. It basically is the longest lasting holiday in the West. Now, Nicholas, I appreciate your comments and feedback, but I would like to present a counter-argument to your point. Yes, it is very true uh, that Valentine's Day certainly has some very, uh, very long roots, and that it does go back in time very far. However, one must consider the observance of Valentine's Day by a majority, and that's how it needs to be viewed by a majority, because you can always find a few, a very small, tiny minority of individuals that are doing this or doing that or whatever, and you can cherry-pick that to try to prove a point. What is the majority of individuals doing on Valentine's Day? Are they treating it as a religious observance? I somehow doubt that, don't you? Even with Christmas, the holiday, of course, exists to celebrate the birth of Christ. It's a religious holiday, largely. And while a good number of people do go out and celebrate it on its religious foundations, they also go and run to the store and buy those presents and gifts and all of that. The same thing applies for Easter. How many people celebrate Easter truly to celebrate the resurrection of Christ... How many people simply celebrate it to get the folks over, uh, make a dinner, uh, the Easter bunny, and all that stuff? Just something to consider. Absolutely, the roots of these holidays stretch back. So many of them do stretch back to religious uh, fundamentals. And there are people out there that celebrate them solely in that fundamentally religious way. However, I think on days especially such as Valentine's Day... More people are running to the store to buy this or buy that because they feel they have to, based on societal custom, rather than celebrating it in a religious context. Nonetheless, Nicholas, I respect your views, your opinions, and I want to thank you for sharing them, because as I always like to say, perspective is such an important thing. Even if it's a view that I may disagree with, I will share it, I'll talk about it, I'll address it. Nicholas, thank you for your feedback. I tell you, that's the one thing that always gets me when it comes down to current affairs, anyway. I'm so sick. I'll I'll tell you this right off the bat. It's just kind of thinking about, as I was answering his uh, question, I was just thinking about the news. If there's one thing that I truly can say I am sick and tired of, 
It's uh, the, the news cycle since 2016. I'm sick of it. It, uh, it disgusts me so much that I almost don't even check it. Because so many things, headlines, and this isn't partisan. This, this is another thing that gets me. You can't even talk about politics anymore without being partisan, you know? Oh, well, he, he said this, even though he didn't really, uh, you know, give any sort of uh, allegiance. Uh, he, he's got to be this. He's got to be that, you know? People look so much into things whenever you even bring up politics, and they're quick to judge, quick to attack, like it's life or death. A- absolutely absurd. But what always gets me, you know, is you go look, and, and this isn't even about whatever organization is, is reporting this. I'm calling out all of them. Every single major media outlet, from Fox News to MSNBC, uh, everything in between. I check the news. I always like to open up Google News and see what you know is going on in the world. And day after day after day, the headlines, U.S. politics, U.S. politics, U.S. politics, U.S. news, five stories about some political event in the U.S., world news, and usually of like the five main headlines, three or four of them are about something with the U.S. U.S. this, U.S. government that, politics this, you know? 90% of which are complete and total irrelevancies. They never end up being anything. They never formulate into anything. As one guy said this, people forget about it a week later, nothing changes. Unless it's some sort of major change in structure, power, such as elections, those are incredibly important, major legislation, or major turmoil within the government, with all due respect, I couldn't care less anymore. So I've been going and I've been flipping on the shortwave radio more and more, I'm already a listener, and uh, I've just been going around and it's just, it always amazes me how uh, the other day even I was just scanning around and I was just listening to the BBC World Service on uh, shortwave for just a few minutes, you know. All these news stories that I never even heard of online that were truly newsworthy uh, in just a few minutes. They were talking about Nigeria, the, the presidential elections in Nigeria, the turmoil that was surrounding them, over 70 people killed and uh, militant attacks in villages there, the fact that the election was delayed by a week, that's pretty big news. Not an ounce of that being reported here. Everything that's going on in Haiti, uh, the widespread protests, the violence, the deaths that's going on in Haiti. No one talking about that, even though it's just a few hundred miles south of Florida here. The only thing that I'm thankful about, at least, is that the media addressed uh, the one shooting that happened at the workplace in uh, Aurora, Illinois. That's that's the only thing I can give them credit for. I'm, I'm actually partially amazed that they actually dedicated that much time to it, uh, because usually it's just U.S. politics, and that's it. You, you name it, the headlines, all U.S. politics. National news, U.S. politics. World news, they gotta find a way to squeeze U.S. politics in there. I'm just so disgustingly sick of it. That's all I can say. I really, I just want to hear real news uh, about things actually going on in the world and uh, not a lot of uneventful, really trivial things. Sorry to just rail about that, but (laughs) as the good saying goes, that's just what grinds my gears. Anyway, I didn't mean to talk about that to uh, any more extent that I wished to. We have a few other listener uh, suggestions coming in. Now, uh, topic suggestions, we have four. Four lined up. Uh, Four pretty diverse and good ones, so let's get to our first one. So, moving inside, uh, just apologies for the uh, the abrupt shift. Uh, Before we get into anything, I just want to give a few words to the folks who really do keep this broadcast going. Funds have been down, but we still have enough to keep this going, and it is thanks 
to Database Pros. This broadcast is brought to you by Database Pros for HR databases, HOA databases, and more great database software. Check them out, db-pros.com. That's db-pros.com. This broadcast also is sponsored by Brandon M. Lohman of Lohman Law PLLC. They provide professional, competent, dedicated, and courteous service. Lohman Law PLLC has represented clients in matters of personal injury, tribal law, oil and gas law, and criminal defense. They are licensed in the state of North Dakota, the state of Minnesota, Fort Berthold District Court, Standing Rock Tribal Court, Federal District Court of North Dakota, and the Federal Court of Claims in Washington, D.C. Lohman Law PLLC is based in Grand Forks, North Dakota. If you need help with your legal claim, contact Lohman Law PLLC to set up a free consultation. Their contact information is as follows. You may find them at LohmanLawFirm.com. That's L-O-M-M-E-N-L-A-W-F-I-R-M.com. LohmanLawFirm.com. Facebook.com slash LohmanLaw. You may reach them via telephone at area code 701 two one three five nine eight six or via email at lomanlaw at gmail dot com. We have four suggestions. The first of which is from Carl, listening in from Manchester, United Kingdom. He says I would love for you to talk about how you think nature is so important to our daily lives. Uh, he writes I love nature and going out for walks I truly believe we all need to be closer to nature. Thank you for your thoughts, Carl. And, uh, you know, I couldn't agree more. Now, I myself am not an outdoorsman. I am not someone that is always out hiking and camping and at the beach or any of that. As a matter of fact, I spend a large amount of my time indoors. But... I have a great appreciation for nature, and, you know, I I mean, like you hear in these own, own shows, preferentially, where do I like to, you know, give uh, most of my lectures? I like to do so outside, because it, there's just something about it, something about that openness, you know, just that open freeness, that, that cleanliness, that beauty that nature provides. So calming, so soothing. And there really is that way to be able to, in a way, connect with it. I say that from personal experience, back when I used to take very frequent night walks years ago. It was almost a form of meditation. Not only would I be, of course, exercising, but it was a way that, during these walks, I was able to just focus on my environment and surroundings, and just in this, in this sense, this indescribable sense, get in touch with nature, and be able to just connect on this, this level with the environment around me, and lead to a more, just a more relaxed, a more peaceful, less turbulent thought process. Nature is one of those beautiful things right here, you know? It's, it's all around us that we can use and not only just explore the world, but admire its beauty. Even just that park down the street or some of those incredible landmarks hundreds or thousands of miles away. It's so, so beautiful, and like I said, it's so calming, so soothing. Absolutely, Carl, I think it does have an effect both on the body, obviously, but on the mind as well. Always in moderation, you have to remember that nature is, is not something that you should just frolic about in, uh, because there are may, many, many dangerous things out there. You need to know what you're doing, and you need to have respect for it, too. Remember this, nature always wins. Always.
you know, you can't fight it. it it'll, it'll get you in the end. So, you know, treat it with respect. But, I, absolutely, I think it's something that I think all of us should be closer to in our daily lives. And that's why it always kind of disappoints me uh, when I do see some of the, the carelessness. You know, not even just with, with littering, but when I see, you know, of course, uh, many acres of beautiful forest get torn down to build another development or factory. You know, it makes me sad. Perhaps some of these installations may be necessary for economic progress, but at that expense, it it saddens me, you know? And sometimes when you hear about wildfires and other disasters that were entirely preventable, caused by us, how much has been lost. You know, it, 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 it leaves me sad to see that we're kind of, we're blowing this ourselves, we're, we're destroying this beautiful planet. There's so much awareness already about the environment, it needn't be expressed any further. And you know, you can get on a, this is a way that you can kind of look at it as a glass half empty or half full kind of way. You can look at it positively and say, well, at least there is more awareness, perhaps, than there was uh, 50, 60 years ago. At the same time, though, you can say, well, will it ever be able to recover? And, you know, is it going to stop? Well, I suppose time will tell, but nonetheless, while it's there, enjoy it. And like I said, Carl, I think really like you said, uh, verbatim. I truly believe we all need to be closer to nature. I, I certainly agree. Right on, Carl. Our next topic uh, comes from Ian, listening in online. Uh, he says, what do you think about IQs and IQ tests? My view of uh, IQ tests, especially uh, the way they can be flaunted about, I I kind of look at it the same way as I, I said a few shows back in regards to the personality test, the uh, Myers-Briggs personality test, the 16 personalities. That's the same way that I view IQ and IQ test. Do I think that IQ is important? Yes. Of course, one's intellectual ability and capabilities, what they can do or what they can't do, uh, you know, what one's mind is capable of. Of course, that's a very important thing in, in life. But at the same time, uh, do I think rigged is too harsh of a word, but do I think that IQ tests can be kind of biased and provide perhaps misleading results? Yes. And do I think that people rely way too heavily on the result of said tests? Absolutely. I think that it's important, but at the same time, I don't think that sitting there and saying, well, I have an IQ of uh, 130, and sitting there and defining yourself as a number and bragging about it, or berating others, or beating yourself up over that number, I don't think that's right. And that's where I have my disagreement on it. You know, again, not to take it with a grain of salt, but not to put such heavy reliance and have this degree of judgment upon others based on your score or the score that others may cast forth. Just another, another reminder of how selfish and deceitful so many people in this world are where you know they'll outright lie about their uh, whatever their IQ score is make themselves feel better make themselves feel powerful better than you better than everyone else in their mind or even if they didn't lie it's only about their score only about how good or bad it is that's all that matters them Nothing can be done. Can't be changed. So on to the next topic we go.
This one is from uh, two listeners combined, Nico and uh, Griffin, in Chicago, Illinois. They wanted to hear my thoughts in general on bagels. Now, I don't know, some of you wouldn't be surprised. Some of you might. <laughs> if you really want the full... Uh, the full story about bagels. I did a video on my YouTube channel about a year and a half ago, the report of the week, that was only about bagels. And I talked about bagels and probably for 20, 25 minutes. I don't, I'm not an avid bagel consumer as of now, but of course, when I lived in New York, for those of you, of course, in the tri-state area, you know that you have the delis and the bodegas and the bagel shops all over the place. And, uh, you know, of course, that was a huge part of my diet at the time. For a while, I would just go very, very basic with uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and I would get the everything bagel. I would get the everything bagel with butter, and I would get that toasted. And then I remember, one day, there was a local bagel place called uh, Zimmy. Zimmy's Bagels. Just, you know, one, you know, just a local deli. Now remember, they would make them on site. And I remember at the time, ever since I tried that bagel from that place, uh, you didn't you didn't see me going into Dunkin' Donuts again. I would always go to this local deli, and uh, I didn't even get the everything bagels anymore. I would usually get uh, just two regular bagels with butter, toasted, and uh, usually a coffee to wash it down with. And those were, I mean, those were some of the best I've ever had. They were delicious because, again, they were made fresh, on site, and I mean, nothing beats it. Especially when this bagel is still so fresh, you know, it's still warm. Not just having been heated, but, I mean, it's just so warm from the fact that it was literally just made. I, that, you know, nothing nothing comes close. Once you kind of get it like that, then you have a Dunkin' Donuts bagel a couple weeks later, and you're kind of eating it, and you're like, you know, what the, what the heck is this? But uh, my, my favorite go-to bagel anyway is the everything bagel I just like the the combination of flavors but sometimes if it's produced by a really good place and it's just you know it's got that freshness and it just tastes really good sometimes it's the plain bagel always with butter I just I don't know I don't go for the the spread or any of that but with butter they just do it you know it just tastes it tastes good that's all that I can say but everyone has their different tastes and, uh, you know, I accept that. I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you should only eat a bagel with butter because that's the, uh, that's the only way it should taste. Oh, no. Now, if you want to have it with cream cheese or nothing at all, go for it. You know, eat it the way you want to. And finally, we hear from Nathan in Essex, England. Uh, he says, I spend most of my time driving around. I find the driving etiquette is quite polite in Southeast England, at least, with people letting you through, etc. And I was wondering what it is like in America. Do people seem polite on the roads, or is there a lot of road rage? You know, I, in my spare time, like watching a lot of uh, dash cam videos, and I like watching these road rage videos and the car crashes and all of that. And that leaves me biased, because, granted, all the videos in these compilations, especially the ones I like to watch them from the, U uh, the United States, it's going to bring out the worst. And, of course, if it was just a polite encounter and everyone just exchanges insurance and it's fine, right, it's not going to be in the video. People want to see those fights, you know, the aggression, the aggressive driving, the crashes. So all of these videos are just bringing out the worst. And that leaves me with a jaded view, because I just tend to assume that every other driver on the road uh, is going to react violently. 
uh, because of uh, one's actions, and, and that's going to be that. You know, and I say that from personal experience. Uh, years ago, I got in a car crash. I wasn't, I was just in the back seat. And, uh, you know, there was a full-blown fight. I mean, the driver of the other car, not to say that the driver of the car I was in was uh, innocent. He was the one at fault, actually, but they got in a full-blown fight. I remember the other driver trying to smash the windshield in. And it, was a, it was a fun day, I'll tell you that. But, uh, it, you know, it, it leaves me jaded. Or I tend to assume that every other driver on the road is uh, going through roid rage and is just going to uh, just be the most aggressive, selfish, self-centered, uh, careless piece of garbage you can possibly imagine uh, when I know that's not true. But certainly is there a sizable percentage of drivers that are? Absolutely. Uh, likewise, it's not just that they turn into this on the road. They are this way as people, but it converts, of course, onto their behaviors on the road. But that doesn't speak for everyone. Uh, more often than not, if there's, say, uh, an issue on the road, uh, people might be upset at first, they might be stressed out, but then it'll mellow out. The people that keep raising it and raising it uh, is, again, a, a percentage, but not everyone. Uh, but there certainly is road rage, you know, it depends. Uh, the one thing I don't notice in Florida as much as I know in New York, in New York you get a lot of people that like to honk the horn. That's just a common thing up there. Uh, just very quick, and it's very fast-paced. You don't see that as much here, but I think it just depends on whereabouts in the country you are, because the U.S. is so massive. It can really be just different... You know, the different states, it's almost like their own different countries. You know, each state has its own topography, its own culture, its own populace, its own laws, etc., etc. So I think it really could depend where you're located and go from there. With that, dear listeners, I conclude this broadcast of VORW International. Again, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or topics for discussion for future programs... You can email me at vorwinfo at gmail.com. Also keep in mind that if you want to support this broadcast, we only got two donations last week, please consider it at vorwinfo at gmail.com via PayPal. vorwinfo at gmail.com, again via PayPal. With that, I hope you can catch us again next week. Same time, same frequency, same online stream. Until then, have a wonderful, splendid week, wonderful weekend. We'll be seeing you again on Thursday, the 28th of February, our final Thursday of the month, final day of the month. See you then, and until then, take care. This is VORW.